Hello? Hey, Jerry. So I just happened to stumble across an article online that I found particularly interesting. Really? Let me guess. You went to the trouble of picking up the phone and calling me just to tell me about some article you read about the top 10 best quarantine looks of 2020. Look, I don't know. I'll figure something out. Like what, Jerry? This is what you've always been committed to. This is, this is your whole life. <laughs> I'm aware, Mom. Thanks for the reminder. I'm just saying. I mean, have you even thought this through? No. Just decided to quit my dream job without giving me even a second of thought. But what are you going to do then, Jerry? Tell me at least you have an idea. I don't know. I was thinking about something simple. Just like a job at Lowe's or something. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Why Lowe's? I don't know. It's a humble job. I would just be helping people find what they need. The key word being help. <laughs> Spending all these years contributing to a toxic society of intolerance and stupidity would be a nice change of pace to actually help people. Jerry, you're not going to be a fucking missionary. <laughs> I didn't say I was going to be a missionary, Mother. I just like the idea of having a humble job like that. It's an honest living where I'm not doing anybody any harm. Now I know you're concerned that I don't have a job anymore, and if that's what this call- No, it's not, it's not just that, Jerry. I mean, the things you wrote in the article are, are, are you doing okay? Okay, it wasn't that concerning, was it? Well, you just sound very stressed. I mean, more than that, you sound burned out. And I mean, I just, you're not actually considering never talking about movies with anyone again, are you? No, I'm not just considering it, I've already made up my mind. Thought I worded that pretty clearly. We have had conversations about other things besides movies before. Yes? I'm actually asking. Yes. Yes. Stand a reason we can do it again? And quick, let's try right now. Mom, what do you think of the top 10 best quarantine looks of 2020? I've got to say, I really don't appreciate your yeah. tone right now. Well, it's the tone of a man whose mother has just called, assuming her son is stupid enough to have quit his former dream job without thinking it through and who also doesn't support the new career endeavor that he wants to embark on. You know I support you, sweetie. This is all just so random. Yeah, I know. Well, two years ago it wasn't something I ever could have done. Yeah, but things change. I love you too. Bye. You have 30 new messages. Hey, man. Um, read your article today. Uh, hope none of that applies to me, because that really suck. Um, just text me when you get the chance, and let me know where I stand in this whole... Hey, Jerry, it's Grandpa. I just wanted to call and say, it was stupid you to quit your job. This bullshit! It's nice to see you too, Eddie. Please, come in. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? What part do you want me to make clear for you? The part where I quit my job? The part where I'm done talking about movies publicly? Yeah, actually, we'd like some clarification on that, please. Are we just never going to discuss movies again? Because at this point, I think that would be impossible. Okay, calm down. None of that applies to you or any of the other guys. We'll keep talking about movies, same as we always have. Okay, and what about the part where we called everyone in the online film community a bunch of idiots whose input means about as much to you as a bum shouting on a street corner? What's not fair about that? How could you say something like that? Because that's how I feel. I'm part of the online film community, oh. you know? Yeah, so are Craig and Scott. So is anyone who's both online and a film fan. Eddie, is this why you've made this big dramatic gesture of actually showing up to my house to confront me about this? Because you thought I insulted you? None of that applies to any of you. I thought you would know that. So no one in our group's included in any of that? No. Well, either way, I still think you're crazy for writing that article. Oh, yeah. Please do me a favor and be the 700th person today to tell me how stupid it was of me to quit my job, because I really need that. It's not just that, Jerry. It's the things that you said. Okay, well, what about the things I said you disagree with? Well, 
for starters, I mean, what's wrong with the online film community? I mean, obviously there's some annoying people there, but I mean, come on, there are annoying people in every community. They are not just annoying, and it is not just some of them. Okay, then give me an example. I'll give you a big example. YouTube. Completely impossible to go into the film section of YouTube anymore without being bombarded by a bunch of pretentious fucking video essays by a bunch of pretentious fucking pricks, none of whom have any idea what they are talking about. What the fuck are you talking about? A lot of the guys that make those video essays are really fucking smart. No, they're not. They are pretentious as fuck. I will grant you some of them actually do possess some film knowledge, but just having knowledge and not having any passion is the definition of what makes you a snob. Wow, well said, Socrates. You're totally not starting to sound like a snob yourself right, right well, now. that's true. That's my biggest problem with the way film discussion works now. Honestly, though, most of them don't have any knowledge or passion. Most of them are just amateurs who watch the people with knowledge and repeat everything they hear them say. And when they do come up with a point of their own to talk about, it's usually just some contrarian bullshit that half the time I don't even really believe. Why Pulp Fiction isn't actually as good as you remember. Why Over the Hedge is actually an overlooked masterpiece. It's complete bullshit. Oh, you're so fucking narrow-minded. Yeah, keep insulting me. It's really nice. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry you're frustrated. I'm sorry you disagree with the way certain people talk about movies, but disagreeing with them and acting like their viewpoint is objectively wrong are two completely different things. Call them wrong all you want, but the second you start comparing them to bum shouting on a street corner, then you're the asshole. And at the end of the day, they love and care about movies just the same as you and I. No, they don't. Don't. That's my whole point. None of them actually care about movies that much. No, they're not really. They just like hearing themselves talk. And they only talk about the same ten directors over and over again because they've never seen anything else. So not fucking All true. This is. I don't know how many video essays you've actually watched, but what you're saying is just not true. Eddie, if you can find me a single film channel on YouTube that makes video essays talking about anybody besides Tarantino, David Fincher, Wes Anderson, Edgar Wright, Christopher Nolan, James Gunn, Paul Thomas Anderson, Stanley Kubrick, Terrence Malick, Martin Scorsese, Denis Villeneuve, uh, or the Coen Brothers, maybe I will concede. Even then, it's not likely because I only have found one. Better yet, find a single film channel on YouTube that has even seen a black and white film that isn't either by Akira Kurosawa, Ingmar Bergman, or Charlie Chaplin. That would be a real achievement. That's a hell of a lot of directors to not like. Oh, bitch, who said I didn't like them? I worship most of the people I just named. I'm just saying, those are the only people a lot of these video essay guys care about. Okay, so they have their preferences. So do I and so do you. Everybody has their favorite directors. I mean, geez, are they not considered real film fans? If they don't include a video about Stanley I mean, fucking Kramer? the fact that they just talk about those people's movies. It is why they only like them so much, because those are the only kinds of movies that they are into. They just prefer their movies over everyone else's. Everyone has their own Bullshit. Taste. It's one thing to have favorite directors and favorite genres. It's another thing to only like those directors and genres. You can't call yourself a cinephile, a true cinephile, if you don't like all kinds of cinema. No matter what it is, period, end of fucking story. Guys like that don't. They are not into movies as an art form. They like Nolan's movies because they're dark and they're deep. They like Tarantino's because they're cool and stylistic. They like Akira Kurosawa's because the people who actually have to know what they're talking about tell them they should. I can see you still think I'm full of shit, but think about it. When was the last time you saw a video essay about a movie like When Harry Met Sally? Or, or, or Scent of a Woman? Or A League of Their Own? You ever see How Risky Business Redefined the Teen Movie? No, it is always either Fight Club or Django or Grand Budapest Hotel or Boyhood. That's Richard Linklater. Oh shit, you're right. Can't believe I got it about him. You want something to drink, by the way? I can't believe I didn't realize until now what your problem is. It's so fucking obvious. Oh, is it? What is my problem? You just think that you're smarter than everybody else. <laughs> well, you know, the second person to tell me that today, I gotta say it hurts a lot more coming from you. I mean, you do, Jerry, clearly. Okay, and what makes you say that? Well, based on what you wrote in the article and what you said here, when it comes to movie knowledge, you think you're the wisest sage in all the land. Nobody could ever possibly know as much about films as the great prophet Jerry Monk. If you don't agree with what he says, if you don't like a certain movie for the same reasons that he does, then you're just not a real film fan. You're just some dumbass uh, poser. That's not what and I And if you don't possess said. the same level of extraordinary knowledge that the wise Jerry Monk possesses, then you're just an idiot who's not worthy about talking about movies at all. Because only someone as smart as the great Jerry Monk can talk about the sacred art of film. The only problem is no one is as smart as you, Jerry. So now only they can talk about movies with it. Now only you can talk about movies with yourself and whoever you think worthy of sharing your opinions with. You're not even fucking listening to me, man. It's not the opinions people have that upset me. It's their mentalities. It's the way they think. I don't give a fuck what your opinions are. Stand there and tell me Transformers 5 is your favorite movie of all time. See if I give a shit. Just don't call yourself a movie expert when you're not. When you don't care about all movies. 
For the record, I not only respect everybody's right to talk about films, I encourage it. I love films and film discussion with all my heart. And until I wrote this article, my belief was the more film discussion I can engage in, the better. I love not only discussing films, but being challenged. I like it when somebody can make me think differently about a certain film. But damn it, things have gotten too ridiculous for me to handle. I cannot be a part of that world anymore. Can't take one more second of it. I cannot sit by and listen to these idiots pontificate all day. I won't sit by and watch as movies like Three Billboards and Marriage Story and La La Land are torn apart by these ass clowns while movies like Aquaman and Bohemian Rhapsody and Venom are some of the biggest hits of the year. And what I absolutely refuse to do is stand by and watch everybody praise Little Women and bitch about how Greta Gerwig didn't get an Oscar nomination for Best Director when there were so many other women who actually deserved the shot. I can't and I won't. So Little Women was the final straw, huh? <laughs> it was so bad. I thought it was alright. And I respect you anyway, Eddie. Because I know you know what you're talking about. And even if we disagree, I know that in your heart you love and you care about movies. That is all that matters. I just can't stand it when people like talking about movies more than they like the movies themselves. I'm sorry about all this. Me too. Well, um... I should probably get going. Let you do with all the bullshit you can never do with today on your own. Sure. I think I'm gonna order some DoorDash if you want some. I just ate before I came. Thank oh. you. Though. No, I got you. Um. Well, I'll see you around then. Yeah, I'll see you around and good luck with all this. Thanks. Because, I mean, none of those would surprise me. And I mean, 
Yeah, how fucking dare you call and say that shit to me? We don't speak to each other for six fucking months and you call me out of the blue to to what? To rub it in my face and I don't have my job anymore. That, that, that right there is why I broke up with your ass. You are so fucking mean, Gina. It's, uh, I broke up with you in the nicest, most delicate way I could because I didn't want to make things unpleasant. But if this is the game we are playing, fine by me. Here's the breakup speech I always wanted to give you. I already touched on reason number one. God, you're so fucking mean. Instead of getting mad, like, I don't know, a normal amount, whatever we would argue, you, uh, you always have to go right up the fucking jugular. My God, you did that shit every time we argued. We argued a lot for those last couple of weeks. Reason two, I think your little voicemail proves this just beautifully. You don't fucking listen to anything, man. I stated very clearly in my article that I am done talking about movies publicly with other people. I never said I didn't love them anymore. But I will bet you've already made some snarky fucking tweet saying some shit like, My ex-boyfriend dumped me because I wasn't in the movies enough for him. Now six months later I find out he's not in the movies at all anymore. How fucking typical. You've never listened to what I or any other person has said to you once in your entire life. Every relationship has its struggles. Sure, one of them shouldn't be that one person is entirely unable to communicate with the other because they don't listen to a fucking word they say. Reason three, otherwise known as the straw that broke the camel's back, is the way you re Oh, fuck. Yeah, reason three, otherwise known as the straw that broke the camel's back, the way you react to this year's Oscar nominations. Yeah, I know, it might sound pretty trivial, but oh my god, Gina, you would not shut the fuck up about them snubbing Greta Gerwig for best director. Fuck all the other women who actually deserved the shot and didn't get it. Lulu Wong for The Farewell, Melina Matsukas for Queen Slim, Joanna Hogg for The Souvenir. No, little Greta Gerwig getting snubbed for Little Women is a true tragedy this Oscar season. You'd think you'd at least be content with the best screenplay nomination she got, which she deserved even less. But no, if she didn't get Best Director, it didn't count. I don't know. Gina, did you see Little Women? If you did, you would know from the biggest pieces of fucking shit. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm rambling. And this is the second Little Women related brand I've gone on today. Gina, I was feeling all this two weeks into the relationship. I held it in for two fucking months. Why? I don't know. Maybe I thought I could make you a nicer person. Maybe I was over around saying that all the positive qualities and ignoring all your negative ones. Maybe it was because of how hot you were. But either way, I'm done with you now. Don't have to put up with your bullshit anymore. Jason think? Oh, he loved him. I mean, I know I'd been badgering him to watch him for so long, but I didn't think he was actually gonna like him, you know? He's just so not that kind of dude, just not into nerdy stuff at all. But by the time we got to Deathly Hallows, he was so into it, we watched both parts in one night. Damn, I'm impressed. I mean, the appeal of Harry Potter almost never fails, but he's such a jock, I never thought he would have gone for it. Oh, you mind if I grab something to drink? Didn't realize how thirsty I was till I started yeah, driving. It's fine, you just put that on the top shelf in the top closet. No, he said he loved these so much, he asked if we could keep these. Oh, yeah? He wanted to show them to all his friends. Really? Yeah, so I guess I know what I'm getting him for Christmas now. Oh, yeah. Get him a Hogwarts blanket and a Quidditch uniform while you're at it. That'll make him look really tough in front of his friends. Oh, I'm fully convinced he's going to get them all into it. They'll be wearing Quidditch uniforms and sorted into houses in no time. <laughs> that I would love to see. Oh, you better be prepared. I told him you're a big fan, too, so he's going to talk your ear off about it at the Christmas party. I mean... You will still talk about it with him, right? It's not against your new code. So you read the article? I did. And you don't approve? Hey, I approve of whatever makes you happy. I mean, I think it's weird and I don't understand it, but if it's what you want, then hey, that's all that matters. Well, you're more understanding than most of the people I've heard from today. If you talk to Stephanie, will you tell her it isn't that big of a deal? I don't think she's going to listen to me. I'll try. You know, I said I don't understand it. 
and I guess this isn't the most popular opinion, but honestly, I think this is really good for you. Really? Yeah, I think it'll bring you a lot less stress, give you some time to focus on some other things, make you a lot less angry. Honestly, I think you should do that. Wait, this what? What? What do you mean a lot less angry? You know. You know. No, I don't know. What do you mean a lot less angry? Well, it just seems like you're angry a lot of the time. I think that quitting this job will really help with I'm that. I'm not angry a lot of the time. What the hell are you talking about? Well, you're always going on and on and on about some movie you hate or some director you think is a hack or how you don't like how they're handling the new Spider-Man movie. Well, I'm not allowed to talk about things I don't like. People talk about things they don't like all the time. Doesn't mean they're angry. Well, you just take it so fucking seriously. Yeah. I mean, you get so intense about Okay, so it. I speak passionately. Doesn't mean I'm angry. What the fuck is your problem? I don't have a fucking problem. Yeah, clearly you do. Where the fuck you get off saying that shit to me? Well, look, calm down. All I'm trying to say You're is that- I hear what you're trying to say. What I ask is where the fuck you get off <laughs> saying it. Okay, well, clearly I was wrong. You're doing such a great job of proving that to me huh. right now. Oh, well, I'm getting angry now because you're accusing me of being angry all the time. You're getting mad right now, too. Does that mean you're always angry? I'm not the one who spends every second of their life thinking about whether they're going to make another Scream movie or if the Sonic movie is too ugly or if they should remake Avatar into a live-action TV series. I mean, who the fuck cares? I do. Movies are what I'm interested in. I have opinions on the things I'm interested in, positive and negative, same as everybody else. To you, the fact that I sometimes have negative opinions about movies means that I am angry all the time. Sarah, for fuck's sake, you and Jason do the exact same thing with sports. That is so not the same fucking oh, yeah, thing. In fact, I'm sure I can count more times you guys have bitched about M. Night, uh, the Falcons than times I've bitched about M. Night Shyamalan. And if you think I'm annoying to listen to, you've clearly never heard yourself talk about how much you wish the Panthers would trade Cam Newton. You know what? Fuck you. <sighs> fuck me. Yeah, fuck you! Fuck you! Oh, this is so fucking typical. How is this fucking typical? What about this is fucking typical? Typical fucking Sarah. Nothing is ever her fault. Somebody's mad, it's their fault. You're part of the reason I even quit my job in the first place. What the fuck are you talking you about? You your passive aggressive comments. You wait time we're out somewhere and somebody asks me, hey, what do you think of this new movie? And I say, I don't know, I think it looks shitty. You say, oh, you'll have to forgive him. He's very opinionated. Like, fuck you. How, how the fuck would you like it if you shared your opinion? And I turned to everyone and said, oh, you'll have to forgive her. She's an uncultured dumbass with no cinematic taste. Yeah, that's how I know I'm not the one with the problem, Sarah. You are always the aggressors in those situations. It is never me. I am just sharing my opinion like everybody else in the room and you are fucking undercutting me at every turn. It is like you have some kind of fetish for making me and Stephanie feel like we're lesser than you. Okay, first of all, I don't get off on putting you and Stephanie down. If that's how you feel, then you're probably just inferring, which you do all the time because honestly, Jerry, you have a persecution complex the size of the fucking moon. Second of all, even if you don't say those things to me, I mean, you're certainly thinking it. I can see that look on your face every time I'm talking about some chick flick I love or some comedy you think is okay. stupid. Well, now you're just inferring. Yeah, maybe I don't get how you can like sex in the city too. Doesn't mean I think you're an idiot. And, 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 and me giving you a look is not in any way the same thing as you verbally putting me down all the fucking time. What the fuck are you doing? I want to show you something. Come here. This is a movie that I love very much. This is a movie I love very much. Movie I love, movie I love, movie I love, movie I hate. Movie I love, movie I love, movie I love, movie I hate. For every movie I rant about, there are 50 more that I adore. And you only want to focus on the negative ones. That's why I'm angry. That's why I want you to get the fuck out of my house. You know what, fine. I'm sorry I'm apparently such a horrible sister to you.
Uh, Chris, you scared the shit out of me, dude. Sorry. What's up? I thought you were supposed to be home from the airport till 9. Oh, I haven't gone yet. Just thought I'd stop by really quickly and see how you were doing. You know, with the article and all. Well, let's see. I've gotten about 100 angry voicemails so far. And you are the third person who's shown up here just in the last half hour to talk to me about it, so take a guess. Who else was here? Eddie and Sarah. I had huge blowouts with both of them. Damn, so it really has been that bad. Yeah, it has been. Uh, I got into it with my mom over the phone earlier. Um, Gina called just to taunt me. I haven't even finished going through the voicemails. <sighs> Sounds rough. Yeah, you don't know what happened. I'm dealing with it though, I was listening to my stress playlist when you walked in. Oh, well, good! You know, I'm glad you have a way to deal with it. Yeah, Childish Gambino always helps calm me down. Oh, you were listening to Bino? Oh, yes, sir. What song? So... Ah, oh, shit! That's one of my favorites! I know, it's mine too. Every time I, every time I listen to that song, it brings back really fond memories when we were all in high school. I, there was just one week. It seemed like everybody was bringing up that song one way or another. They were talking about how much they loved it, or they were... Talking about the music video, and they're talking about how it was the only thing getting them through that week. It makes you smile thinking about that. It really reminds me of a happier time. Like when I saw my friends all the time, back when I could talk about movies and it was still fun. People still respected my opinions instead of calling me a snob. God, I'd give anything for it to be like that again. I don't want it to seem like I'm hung up on the past or anything. I'm really happy with the way things are now. It's, it's just a stupid movie thing, man. It's hard trying to adjust to not talking about it with anybody. For as long as I can remember, it's been such a huge part of my life. I've been talking about movies with everybody that I know. As happy as I am, I don't have to subject myself to the bullshit anymore. It's just... I wish there was somebody I could talk to about it every day. You know what I mean? I wish it could be like how it was then. Well, sounds to me like you're not taking your own advice. What do you mean? Well, didn't you say in the article that nothing anyone thinks about movies means anything to you anymore? <laughs> yeah. And didn't you write that what matters most is watching and loving movies rather than just talking about them? Yeah. Well, if all that's true, then you really shouldn't be so upset, right? If what people think doesn't mean anything to you, then you shouldn't care if they call and leave angry messages. I mean, I get it's probably a bit overwhelming, but give it a day or two and they'll all shut up. Then you'll basically never have to worry about it again. Plus, you still get to watch and love movies as much as you want, so, you know, I, I really don't think it's as bad as you think it is. I guess you're right. Oh, come on, you know I'm right. I'm using your logic for God's <laughs> sakes. You are right. So, I, none of that should be a problem then, I get. What they say doesn't matter. Who's right and who's wrong doesn't matter. What matters is that you love watching movies and you can look at one anytime you want. So whether you're a film critic or not, whether people agree with your opinions or not, none of that matters. What matters is you love movies and no one can take away that special feeling you get when you watch one. God, you're so right. I mean, you're so fucking right. <laughs> hey, hey, let's say down the line, you do find someone you feel comfortable talking about it with. That's okay too. And who knows? Maybe one day you'll find a girlfriend you can talk about it with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> hey, thank you, man. No problem at all. I am glad to be of help. But, uh, I get a bounce, so I'll talk to you later, man. All right, take it easy. You too.
Hey, yeah, hey Sarah, it's me. Um, just wanted to call and say sorry about everything I said earlier. You're not a horrible sister. I just don't think you realize how much it hurts when you say stuff like that. Like when you make those comments or when you say the things I care about don't matter. But I, mean, I, I guess I'm guilty of thinking similar things about you, so maybe neither one of us are perfect, but I just wanted to call and say I'm sorry and that I love you. I hope we can work through this. Right on. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hi. Hi. I've got an order here for Jerry. Uh, yeah, it's me. Um, <coughs> so I was just wondering. You wouldn't happen to be Jerry Monk, the film blogger, would you? Because I happen to know he lives in this area. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Wow. I thought it might be you. I hoped it would anyway. I was going to be really disappointed if it was some other Jerry Monk who lived in this area. So you read some of my stuff then? Yeah. Every piece you've ever written. I'm a really big admirer of yours. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> uh, any uh, piece in particular you really liked? Yeah. I know it was recent, but I really liked your review of Little Women. I'm glad I'm not the only one who hated that. <laughs> oh, it was so bad, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. I swear, Greta Gerwig just put on a blindfold and flipped to random pages in the book when she was determining the scene <laughs> order. That's what it seemed like. But honestly, the reason I'm such a big fan isn't really because of any one piece you've written. It's just the way you look at stuff. You actually love the movies instead of just pontificating about them. And I mean, that's not exactly a unique quality. Not in real life, anyway. I've always found that most of the people I talk to in real life actually like the movies. And don't just pontificate. But real life and the internet are two totally different things. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> did you read the piece that I wrote today? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And as disappointed as I am that I won't be able to read any more of your stuff, I totally understand the reason you did it. I probably would have done the same thing, honestly, if I had to put up with all that crap for as long as you did. Wow. Um, I mean, this is going to sound weird. Would you want to come in? Uh, I'm going to start watching In Bruges. I don't know. Have you ever seen it, or if you have to keep door dashing? Or uh, yeah, I kind of do, actually. This is only my second one tonight. Oh, right, that's, that's cool. Oh, but we can meet up tomorrow. I know this nice little place. We can grab dinner if you want. Uh, totally. Uh, what's the name of the place? It's this place in Davidson called The Soda Shop. You're kidding. I'm from Davidson. I go there all the time. Perfect. See you around 7? You see that? <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye.